Hi guys, my name is Lin. I am a registered nurse that almost had three years working experience. Welcome everybody back to my channel, Lin's Daily in Class. This channel focuses on helping you guys pass your nursing exams. This video is about iron anemia and thalassemia anemia. Most anemia cases, I believe, that got handled outpatient. Because I have been an inpatient med surge nurse for almost three years, I have never seen any patients got admitted due to only iron anemia, except the patient's hemoglobin got critical low. However, I do see my patients coming to the hospital with another disease. They have anemia as well, and then the internal medical team, they have to manage this problem. And also, this topic will be for sure at your nursing exam. So, let's practice. Question number one. A patient diagnosis with iron deficiency anemia is prescribed ferrin gluconate orally. Which should the nurse teach the patient? Select all the apply. 1. Eat only red meat and organ meats for protein. 2. The stool may be dark or tarry and this can mask blood. 3. Take the medicine with a full glass of milk. 4. Limit exercise for several weeks until a tolerance is achieved. 5. Taste stool softener if you develop constipation. The answers are 2 and 5. Ferris gluconate has a common side effect of making the stool uh, dark or terry color, which can mask the appearance of blood in the stool. Option 5 is also correct. Ferris gluconate may cause constipation, so the patient can take some stool softener. Option 1 says eat red meat and organ meat only for protein. This one is wrong. Normally, healthcare professionals, we don't encourage people to eat a lot of red and organ meat. Besides, the patient should eat a well-balanced diet high in iron, vitamin, and protein. This option has this absolute word only, so this option you can eliminate quickly. Option 4 is also wrong. Exercise has nothing to do with tolerant iron. Okay, question number 2. A nurse is performing a community assessment. Which of the following age groups would be appropriate for her to monitor iron deficiency anemia? Select all the apply. 1. Pregnant women. 2. Toddlers. 3. Adolescents. 4. Elderly nursing home residents. Or 5. A 22 years old college student. The answers are 1, 2, 3, and 4. Pregnant women as option 1, toddlers as option 2, and adolescents as option 3 are all in the periods of rapid growth. People in those groups are more likely to experience iron deficiency anemia. And option 4, those elderly nursing home residents are also at high risk for developing iron anemia, often due to financial concerns as well as poor dentation that interfere with chewing meat. Option 5, the college students is not at the period of rapid growth. So option 5 is the only wrong answer. Okay, question number three. A nurse is reviewing the lab values of a patient with iron anemia and anticipates which lab value would be decreased. One, erythrocytes. Two, platelets. Three, leukocytes. Four, blood pH level. The answer is 1. Anemia is defined as decreased number of erythrocytes. Option 2. Platelets do not decrease for this patient with anemia. And option 3. Leukocytes are white blood cells. Anemia patients have normal white blood cells. 
and ocean 4 blood pH has nothing to do with anemia. Okay, question number four. A patient diagnosis with anemia begins to complain of dyspnea when ambulating with a physical therapy. Which intervention should the nurse implant first? One, apply oxygen via nasal cannula. Two, call respiratory stat. Three, get a wheelchair for the patient. Four, assist the patient complete the whole sections of physical therapy. Okay, the answer is number three. Get the patient a wheelchair to sit down. The patient is experiencing dyspnea on exertion, which is very common for patients with anemia. So we should let the patient sit down and take a quick break. Option one is not the priority. If the patient is still showing dyspnea after a quick break, then we should put the oxygen on. And option two, Call respiratory that is just too much. And option four says, assist the patient complete the whole sections of physical therapy? Are you kidding me? This one is not necessary. The patient's exercise tolerance will build up gradually. A lot of times, we don't have to push too hard. Okay, question number five. A nurse is documenting care of a patient with iron deficiency anemia. What is the most appropriate nursing diagnosis? 1. Fatigue. 2. Deficient fluid volume. 3. Ineffective breathing pattern. 4. Ineffective airway clearance. The answer is option one. Anemia fatigue relate to decreased hemoglobin and diminished oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Iron deficiency anemia causes abnormal hemoglobin level, which impair tissue oxygenation and warrant a nursing diagnosis of fatigue. Iron deficiency anemia does not cause an efficient flu volume and its legs directly relate to ineffective airway clearance and effective breathing pattern than to infected gas exchange. Okay, question number six. A nurse and an licensed assistant are caring for a patient on the hematology and oncology floor. Which task should the nurse delegate to the UAP? 1. Chart the bowel movements of patient diagnosis with Malena. 2. Help and educate the patient's lunch and dinner choices that are high in iron. 3. Take vital signs of a patient who received blood the day before. Or 4. Be the second person to check blood products with the RN. The answer is option three, which is to take the vital signs of a patient who received blood the day before. The option is correct because the UAP takes vital signs after the blood transfusion is done. Every hospital has their own policy. At my hospital, the RN stays at the patient's room and does the first and then the second vital size. And always, always remember, iron has to stay in the room with the patient for the first 15 minutes of blood transfusion. Option one is wrong. Although charting intake and output can be a task to UAP, however, this patient is diagnosed with melena, which requires RN's knowledge of the melena's color, consistency, and so on. So this task cannot be delegated to the UAP. Option two is also wrong. Do you guys see the keyword educate? No, UAP cannot do any educational task. This is an RN's job. Option four is also wrong. Only RN can be the second person to check blood products with another RN. Okay, move on to question number seven. A nurse is caring for a patient with anemia that requires 
lifelong iron supplementation to ensure maximum effectiveness of the therapy, what should the nurse, including in the patient's plan of care, select all the apply? 1. Monitor the patient's for liver problems. 2. Assess the patient for psychological problems. 3. Evaluate the patient's response to the therapy. 4. Discontinue the supplementations for 2-3 to three months after hemoglobin back to normal. The answer is 1, 3. Why undergo therapy? The nurse should evaluate the improvement in hemoglobin level during every visit and should take necessary steps if hemoglobin level do not improve. Long-term IL supplementations can cause liver dysfunction, therefore the patient should be evaluated for liver function. Iron therapy should be continued for 2 to 3 months after hemoglobin level return to normal to replenish the iron store in the blood. Iron supplementation should not be stopped once the hemoglobin level are back to normal. Iron therapy is not associated with psychological problems, so there is no need to monitor for psychological trends. Okay, move on to question number 8. Which of the following is the most appropriate initial treatment for patients with beta serosamia major? 1. Transfusing vitamin K 2. IVIJ and plasma pharesis 3. Blood transfusion 4. Oral iron supplement The right answer is option 3. Serosamia major is the most severe form of beta serosamia. It develops when beta globin genes are missing. It progresses to death before the age of 20. Treatment are including of periodic blood transfusion, splenectomy if spleen megaly is present, and treatment of transfusion cause iron overload. Therefore, option 4 is wrong and option 3 is correct. Therosamia major patients don't require vitamin K transfusion or IVIJ or plasma pharesis. Okay, question number 9. A patient diagnosis with serosamia anemia asks the nurse to explain the difference between anemia and fatigue. The nurse explained that Anemia stems from a decreased number of red blood cells and then the fatigue results from a or an 1. Increase in carbon dioxide 2. Abscess of factor 8 3. Decrease in oxygen or 4. Generation of T-cell antibodies The answer is option 3. Anemia stemmed from a decreased number of red blood cells. Red blood cells carry hemoglobin and oxygen. The lack of red blood cells results in deficiency of oxygen in body tissue. Clothing factors such as factor A relate to body's ability to form blood clots and N related to anemia or the carbon dioxide in option 1 or T-cells antibodies in option 4. Okay, move on to last question, which is question number 11. A patient with serosamia major that is receiving a blood transfusion shows signs of hemochromatosis. The nurse anticipates a prescription of what medication? 1. Ferrin scrutiny 2. Mesotrase 3. Deforosamine or 4. Ion dextron complex
The answer is option three. A patient with serosemia major requires frequent blood transfusion and is at high risk for iron toxicity. Nephrosamate chelates with iron and reduce iron overload or hemochromatosis. Option two, mesotrexate is an anti-cancer medication and it does not reduce iron overload. Iron supplements such as foreign scorucone and iron dextrose complex should not be administered to patients because they further increase the risk of iron overload. Alright guys, and that's it for today's iron anemia and serosemia anemia and class practice questions. And remember to like and subscribe my channel. My channel have other NCLEX practice questions. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.